Steve's passion for elephant conservation has spanned from the tsunami ravaged Banda Arch 8 through to supporting conservation projects throughout the fragile ecosystems of Southeast Asia. Elephants will always be in our hearts here at Australia Zoo. Steve's not here with us in body, but in spirit, he'll always be here. And I spoke with my son uh, about a few days ago, and he said to me, he said, Daddy, I think we should all be warriors like Steve. And uh, I just said to him, you're absolutely right. So uh, whether it's for the wilderness, whether it's for the animals, his family, whether it's for just the planet or just life in itself, Steve showed us that we can live like warriors and we can make the world a better place. Sending all our love and again, sorry we can't be there. Steve loved all animals, but his deepest love was the crocodiles. For scientists and laymen alike, there's still much to learn about these prehistoric reptiles. But as we've heard, Steve has made a major contribution into our understanding of their behaviour, breeding and feeding patterns. They're no longer a figure of fear. He changed the world for them too. Now here's a good mate of Steve's, David Wenham, to read a poem, The Crocodiles Are Crying. Endless visions fill my head. This man as large as life. And instantly my heart mourns for his angels and his wife. Because the way I see Steve Irwin, just put everything aside. It comes back to his family. It comes back to his pride. His animals, inclusive, crikey, light the place with love. Shine his star with everything he fought to rise above. The crazy man of khaki from the day left the pouch, living out his dream and in that classic Steve-O crouch, exploding forth with character and redefining cheek. It's one thing to be honoured as a champion unique. It's one thing to have microphones and spotlight cameras shoved. It's another to be taken in and genuinely loved. But that was where he had it right. I guess he always knew from his father's modest reptile park and then Australia Zoo. We cringed at times and shook our heads. But true to nature's call, there was something very Irwin in the makeup of us all. Yes, the more I care to think of it, the more he had it right. If you're going to make a difference, make it big and make it bright. Yes, he was a lunatic. Yes, he went in head first. But he made the world happy with his energetic burst. A world so large and loyal that it's hard to comprehend. I doubt we truly count the warmth until life meets an end. To count it now, I say a prayer with words of inspiration. May the spotlight shine forever on his dream for conservation. My daughter broke the news to me. My six-year-old in tears. It was like she just turned old enough to show her honest fears. I tried to make sense of it, but while her dad was trying, his little girl explained it best. She said, the crocodiles are crying. Their best mate's up in heaven now. The crocs up there are smiling. And as sure as flowers, poems and memories are piling, as sure as we'll continue with the trademarks of his spiel, of all the tributes worthy, he was rough, but he was real. As sure as crikey fills the sky, I think we'll miss you, Steve. Goodbye. Come with me, share it with me, share my wildlife with me, because humans want to save things that they love. My job, my mission, the reason I've been put onto this planet is to save wildlife. And I thank you for coming with me. Yeah, let's get them. 
We'll miss you, mate. Hey, to Steve Irwin, his family, we miss him, the world misses him, Discovery misses him. It just will never be the same, baby. We'll miss you, mate. Thank you deeply for every moment and every minute of your company. My hand, my heart, Stephen. My friend. Now it's time for Steve to leave his beloved Crocosseum for his last research trip into the great unknown. Brian Coulter, his right-hand croc man, will drive Steve's truck on this, its final journey, with a guard of honour of all his croc crew. <laughs> 